Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2. This time we're going to look at the specialist. This is a class guide to the specialist and I must say it's probably my um, preferred class overall. Um, I really like the flexibility and it is a highly underrated class because ma many of uh, the uh, newer players of XCOM would uh, think about the specialist that maybe this class is not able to dish out enough damage but if you take a closer look at it, the specialist has a wonderful package of a lot of utility functions, is very action economy efficient, so usually can do two things a turn at the same time, has a very high damage output later in the game, and on top of it is just filling a couple of uh, roles that are otherwise completely left out. But how should you skill him? Now in times of War of the Chosen, clearly you can buy uh, additional abilities with uh, the um, action point, ability points, and you can see that uh, the Specialist is probably one of the few classes where I would actually recommend to almost buy every single skill. However, um, when you level up, you only have <clears throat> one of the two um, uh, tracks to go. And so let me uh, let us shortly look at how would you level the specialist up in order to have, let's say, the safest and most reliable way of uh, playing it. So the, uh, the specialist as a squad, he comes with two abilities, a protocol um, as the standard um, ability to move your gremlin drone, which is this little hovering thing over here, um, towards the soldier, basically giving it plus 15 uh, to defense. So that's almost like half cover extra bonus. Plus, it also immunitizes yourself or reduces the chance of getting critically hit. So if you have a, uh, a unit being um, stuck in the open without any cover, that's always a good thing. But, uh, plus, uh, the A protocol doesn't really end the turn. So when I was talking about like being very action economy efficient, this is a really, really strong ability. Then secondly, also standard ability hack, he can use the drone in order to hack remotely, which whenever you come to a mission where you either need to recover an item or uh, get information source or shut down a system, the specialist is the way to go. So these two are kind of your starter. Next up, the decision between medical protocol and combat protocol. Now, let me be clear on this one because uh, I probably will get some disagreements. A lot of people love to play with combat protocol, which effectively means uh, you can use an action which ends your turn in order to deal two and later four points of damage as secured uh, damage and you can make sure that someone is taking uh, an enemy is taking that damage you have two uh, two charges per uh, per mission uh, with it uh, as opposed to medical protocol which allows you to heal via your drone and you on top of that get another charge of healing uh, plus, if you later skill into the tree, that upgrades up to four charges that you have permission. Now, a lot of people will say, you know what, Saiken, I mean, Combat Protocol is super good because uh, you can definitely remove Overwatch. A, B, you're capable of um, hitting a lot of, um, hitting a lot of uh, things that are super low on health and you can deny them a next turn. And whilst all of that is true, I must very, very clearly say that the medical protocol is kind of uh, um, more like a safe net. It is way easier to play with it. And the many times when you are getting stunned, disoriented, um, uh, knocked out, unconscious, bleeding out, medical protocol will simply help you. It does not end your turn, and that's the good part about it. You can heal twice even per, uh, per round. So both more action uh, if, uh, economy efficient, and secondly, just the very, very safe way of playing it. So I would every single time choose medical protocol over uh, combat protocol. I'm a very firm believer in it. The only downside to it, and uh, to, to be clear there as well, is if you don't take any damage, which on an optimal run you won't, um, that's kind of a wasted um, ability because you're not using it. However, that's a luxury problem. Next up, Haywire protocol versus revival protocol. Much more difficult choice. Um, if you come to this point, I would probably recommend you to buy both. Why is it important? Haywire protocol basically allows you to um, hack enemy units. There is about 50-50% uh, chance for the strongest unit that's currently in the game um, to, to, uh, to be hacked. So as you level up and get higher, um, higher ranks and higher hacking skill and better drones, you always end up in this like 50-50-ish uh, 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 corridor that you can take over a unit. Now, whilst there is a downside to it, when you fail, the unit effectively gets a stat bo uh, boost, so a little bit more defense skills, a little bit better uh, to hit. 
if you actually can hack a unit, you will get four full turns of service with a unit. It can act as an extremely nice scout. Many of the, um, uh, many of the mechanical units even uh, have um, rockets loaded to them, so they can remove cover additionally, plus they can take a couple of hits, which is just plain out simply a wonderful option for you to turn around the, uh, the tides of the battle. Now, how would you say, Saiken, can that be topped on the other side, the Revival Protocol? The Revival Protocol doesn't uh, only allow you to heal, but it kind of extends the usage of uh, healing towards additional uh, options, such as uh, removing negative effects, disoriented, stunned, panic, and unconsciousness. Now, why is that so unbelievably good? This ability effectively allows you to make certain items in the game completely obsolete panicked as an example. A panic unit cannot act uh, and the mind shield was the developer's design to, to counteract it. Now, think about it. Um, the units in the front are getting uh, panicked first because they are the ones that the aliens can see. Your specialist who stands like far back and is a rather a backline unit will never be the, or very, very seldomly be the one that is being panicked. So with the removal protocol, and since it only takes one turn, so you even can shoot afterwards or do something else afterwards, you effectively make the mind shield completely yeah, pointless. Um, that's one of the, 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 the downsides um, of that ability. Certain um, items are no longer good. Stunned, um, another great example. With a stunned, you can take uh, uh, units that would actually be out of the uh, current mission and regain uh, their consciousness plus use them. Very, very handy um, ability. If you're an advanced player, even disorientation can work uh, wonders because sometimes when the enemy is going to flashbang you or disorient you in any other way, you cannot use your special ability. So technically, this is the only way to remove it and you want to have maximum control of your units because often throwing a grenade or uh, launching a rocket or uh, launching a Psy ability is a very, very useful tool. That's why Revival Protocol is also a must-have. You definitely want to skill both. Now, next up, Field Medic with a Scanning Protocol. Earlier it was a very clear uh, choice. So in the plain, uh, uh, plain vanilla XCOM 2, Field Medic was just better. A Field Medic gives you two extra charges with your uh, medikit. So instead of one, you end up with three, later even four, I think. Um, and the scanning protocol effectively gives you two charges of, um, uh, of an item which is uh, called Battle Scanner. Um, now, scanning protocol has more a niche uh, function. There's, uh, it is good in many um, circumstances to know what you're up against and it only takes one turn. So that's the advantage. And it really shines when there are chrysalids on the map because the scanning protocol and the battle scanner are the only things that actually uh, will allow you to detect the burrowed chrysalids. Very useful there. Later in the game, um, I would simply recommend instead, uh, whilst you're leveling up, to go with uh, Field Matic. Uh, if you have points later on, go for scanning protocol. But for the couple of missions where there are uh, chrysalids, just take the battle scanner. It's a niche tool. Done. Next up, Captain Rank, uh, Threat Assessment versus Covering Fire. Two good abilities, but one is way better than the other. Let's describe first Covering Fire um, means there's more than just uh, movement uh, that could trigger overwatch shots. So basically, as soon as an enemy does anything, you will trigger an overwatch shot. That's a good ability. That's not bad. But you know, when you have watched the other videos, that I'm personally not a big fan of reactive play. You shall never bank on... Uh, waiting that the enemy is actually doing something uh, onto you. So therefore, you want to always kill the enemy before they can uh, act. Hence, I recommend threat assessment. Why is threat assessment so good, uh, you ask yourself? Well, threat assessment does, not, uh, does uh, turn your automatic ability 8 protocol, where you're giving someone plus 15 defense, into uh, the option to also give the person an overwatch, which is phenomenal. Uh, hear me out. There are many typical uh, tricks that I do with this ability because uh, by giving someone an overwatch uh, shot, you effectively um, give someone an extra turn, which is super, super valuable. So um, this ability could either be used on yourself since it doesn't end your turn. You can start with giving yourself like a, a, a 
um, uh, uh, an aid protocol, too many S in this uh, explanation. So you can start to give yourself an aid protocol. And with threat assessment, you will be on Overwatch for the rest of the round. And then afterwards, you can still shoot. You can also do that and give someone else in the front line a threat assessment. Super handy ability. I highly, highly recommend you to skill it. It's very, very powerful. And it synergizes well with the next two abilities, which is Guardian and Ever Vigilant. I would go Guardian here. Let me explain uh, the two first. Uh, Ever Vigilant uh, just means if you double move, you will get an Overwatch for free. Cool ability works out if you need to advance and it's not a bad ability. However, Guardian is better. Guardian allows you and gives you a 50% chance whenever you take an Overwatch shot that is successful to take another Overwatch shot. And out of my experience, specifically with extended magazines in your uh, in your um, rifle, you can take easily take up to four, five, or six Overwatch shots. Now, think about that. If you can make yourself ready for uh, for an Overwatch shot and then take six Overwatch shots, that is just very very powerful. And it also does not uh, it also does not contradict to what I said earlier. Um, the reason why these two Overwatch abilities are great and this Overwatch ability is mm, so la la is there is nothing wrong with uh, uh, with triggering Overwatch traps where you're effectively like putting your whole squad onto Overwatch and the enemy runs into you because the only thing that the enemy can do on their turn is to move. Therefore, you don't need Covering Fire to do anything else. Covering Fire is an ability that only works or that only ju is justified if you have engaged a pack and you kind of fucked it up in one way or the other and they get their turn. Only in that specific circumstance, Covering Fire will actually benefit you anything. You sh should never be in that circumstance. But putting Overwatch traps, which means you have everyone on Overwatch and the enemy runs into you on their turn, that is something that you uh, that you most likely should use as a very, very common tool. Now, the kernel abilities are supremely good. I love them both to death and I would uh, recommend you to get both. Number one, uh, the restoration one, uh, which basically allows you to heal all of your um, uh, all of your uh, squad mates at one time. If you've taken a big hit, this is just the counter ability. Elsewise, it's another charge for your healing kit, so it doesn't hurt. It's just very, very good. Capacitator Discharge basically is an AoE grenade, uh, which deals, uh, it's the AoE version of the Comet Protocol, which deals additional uh, damage towards robotic units. I think it's four with the, uh, four with the highest uh, gremlin, and it does um, some extra damage um, against uh, robotic units. I think overall eight damage prior to being uh, subject for armor. So that's really it. That's the uh, specialist uh, review. I hope you found it uh, uh, informing and successful. Please take a moment to like the video and uh, write in the uh, description down below what you would do different in your build of your specialist. Thank you for watching and take care.